Good morning, everybody. Hope that you are doing well. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching this, I want to thank you for joining us today and thank you for taking this time out. I know that there are people working during this time and they may not be able to watch the live, but they can watch the replay. That's the wonderful thing about technology. All right, so let's see who's on. Uh, I already see Kayla is on today. Hello. There is Angie from Mississippi. Good to see you. Hey, listen, I just want you guys to know that we are going to be talking about something today. Uh, this is not going to be a, a comedy type thing. This is going to be more of motivation, encouragement, inspiration, whatever you want to call it. This is me sharing with you some thoughts that I received about ending 2022 and walking into 2023. And so if you know of someone that has had a rough year, if you know someone that is a bit discouraged because things they hoped would happen in 22 did not happen, then I would love for you to share this with them. I would love for you to share this video with them, even if it's just through private messenger and you just send them this link. I really feel like some of the things I'm going to share, I hope will speak and encourage some people today, whether you're watching live or whether you are watching the replay. Now, if you are watching the replay, I'm going to ask you to contribute just like I will those who are watching us live. All right. So if you hear something that really speaks to you, something that makes you go, oh, that was for me, then I want you to hit the hearts. That's going to let me know, since I can't see your face, that's going to let me know that, yes, that's, that's speaking to me right there. I need, to, I need more of that right there. Uh, so whenever you do that, that will be uh, very encouraging. Also, let me make sure that every person that's watching us live or on the replay because of people that are sharing this you may be on my comedian mickey bell page and you may not be following us we are so excited because we just went over the thirty-two thousand follower mark which is huge for me i know there are others that have hundreds of thousands of followers i'm a little boy from alabama who's just getting started so the fact that we hit 32,000 is a major milestone for me. But I do want to encourage you that if you're watching and uh, you want more stuff like this and want to laugh a little bit and keep up with what we're doing, then that's why I want you to follow us. We have a few more people uh, that are coming on board with us. There's Miss Sue. Hello, Miss Sue. How are you doing? Melinda Powers, good to see you on here. Dallas, Texas in the house. Hello, hello. There's Donna Howard. Hello, hello. We've got Betty and we've got Kim. Good morning. There is Kingston. Hello, hello, hello. I've got Geraldine from Sherwall, South Carolina. Oh, look at there. I've got Concord, Alabama in the house. Nicholas, good to see you, buddy. I like that t-shirt, by the way, you got in your profile pic. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Leaving 22 and heading into 23. I want to speak to those of you who... It's easy to say, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. It's easy to say, I'm not going to make a New Year's resolution. Many times, we will not do that simply because of the fact that we know we're not going to keep them. There are people who every year will make a commitment, who will make a New Year's resolution. Call it whatever you want to call it. But there are people who will make these but they will automatically talk down about those if you don't make them. So if you make them, it's usually because you believe and you're going to hold yourself accountable and you've got goals. And that's pretty much all we're talking about. Whenever we talk about resolutions and a new year, we're talking about goals that we are setting for ourselves for the new year. And the reason many people go, well, I don't make New Year's resolutions, what they're telling you is either I have no goals or I know that whatever I set forth as a goal, I'm not going to follow through with. And that's what I want to encourage you with today. Because I believe that every person that is watching me right now should have some goals for the new year. Be it personal, be it your money, be it your relationships, be it your career, 
whatever it is, you should have goals. And I'm going to talk about that as well. But you should have those things ahead of you that you're striving for. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Now, I'm going to ask you in the comment section. I'm going to ask you in the comment section if you already have goals for the new year, whatever it may be. Now, listen, look at me. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Don't be spiritual. When I ask you these questions, <clears throat> don't be spiritual. Everybody wants peace on earth, okay? Don't be spiritual. Don't. So when I ask you these questions, be real with me, okay? Promise me. Hit the hearts right now if you make that promise that you're going to be real. Don't, don't, don't try to impress people with how spiritual you are with your answers, okay? All right, let's just get that straight there. All right, so, yeah, hit those hearts. So I want to ask you, first of all, how many of you have, I mean, honestly to yourself, how many of you in the comment section would just type me if you have goals for the new year? If you have sat down and legitimately thought it through and you've got things you want to accomplish in 23 that you've not been able to accomplish already, is there anybody? Anybody? Um, it could be to lose weight. It could be to work on your money. It could be anything. Get closer to God. It could be um, take a vacation. Okay, look here. Look at all the me's popping up. Look at all the me's popping up. Perfect. Wonderful. Look here. Look here. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, now, here's what I want you to do. Without revealing too much, without revealing too much, I want you to type in there, give me one goal or one thing you want to accomplish in 23 that you've not been able to accomplish already. You can be as vague as you want to be, but here's what happens. When you type it or you write it, boom, it becomes real. It does. Why do you think that uh, God in the scripture said, write the vision down? Write it down. Okay? So I'm not going to put any of them up on the screen, but I see some of the me's. I see a bunch of you. Betty, I see you. Jillian, Angie, Cheryl, I see you with the me's. All right, now I see some of them starting to come in. Very good. Very good. Okay. I see them. Very good. Now, even if you're watching the replay, I want you to participate. I want you to make it real by typing it out. Make it real. All right? Very good. I see you. Now, let's talk about this. Now, I hope that you have eliminated all the distractions. I'm not going to keep you long, but I hope that you've eliminated all the distractions around you so you can listen because I don't want you to miss this. All right, so there are some goals that you may have that you are making these goals once again. And I know that it would kind of be embarrassing if I were to ask you, so I'm not going to ask you to type. I'm not going to ask you to respond, but you can respond right where you are. How many of you that just typed a goal, this is not the first time that's been your goal? This is not the first time you've sat at the end of the year and said, I want to get debt free, or I want to lose weight, or I want a better job, or I want to step out on faith and start my new career, or I want to do something that I know I'm supposed to be doing, but I just haven't had the faith to do it. Okay, let me ask you this question. Why hasn't it happened yet? Don't answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. Why hasn't it happened yet? I believe I have the answer. If not the answer, I believe I have you some encouragement for going into 23 to where we can change this. Okay? Because every year at this time, this is the time of year that everyone feels like, okay, a new year uh, means that I get to start over. And I find it interesting. Why is it at the beginning of the new year? Why couldn't it be at the beginning of a new month? Why do we not put emphasis on the last day of the month going into a new month? How about this? Why can't it be the first day of the week? Why can't it be the first hour of the day? 
We have put such a great emphasis on it being a new year. A new year. And we have things like new year, new you, or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, this is going to be my year, or this is going to be a new year. I get to start over, get to start fresh. I get, okay, well, my question is, we start a new month, we start a new week, and we start a new day. So why is it that we put so much emphasis on the new year? And that's going to become important because of the fact that if you find yourself in March already falling behind on the goal that you've stated, you shouldn't have to wait until the new year to start picking up the pieces and working on it again. It could be the new month. It could be the new week. It could be the new day. So I, I want to first get your mind out of the fact that it has to just be yearly, annually. It has to just be at the new year. Because you know what? If January doesn't produce what you have listed down as your goal, we can try again in February. If this week you eat terrible and it goes totally against you losing the weight, guess what? We can start again tomorrow. Right? We don't have to wait for the new year. But we make plans, and many of us will go through that we will write a vision down. Um, I'm just curious, um, how many of you have a vision board? Some of you may not even know what I'm talking about. That's fine. It, that's fine. But I'm just wondering, how many of you actually have a vision board? And a vision board is simply where you take a, uh, you take a board. It could be a post poster board, it can, be the, uh, it can be something on your computer, but it's where you just take pictures and you post it, your goals and dreams, what you want to accomplish. Um, that's one of the things I'm going to do in uh, 23. I've had some things that's constantly been in front of me. I would put them as a screensaver or make it one of my wallpapers on my phone, so every time I open up my phone, I would see it. So I haven't done the actual vision board like in my office, but I've done things like post-it notes and use things like my wallpaper. Um, yeah. So it, all the mindset is, is the more you see it, the more you think about it, the more you're geared to go after it. That's why a lot of times if you're going to lose weight, people will say, what is your motivation? And you may take a picture of you where you don't really like what how you look and it motivates you to stay true to yourself and true to your goals. But I want to I want to give you a revelation. And I want to give you a revelation because I believe this is why many of us, remember I'm saying us because this is not just directed at you. But I want to give you a revelation. And if you're able to write some of this stuff down, I would love it if you could write this down. Here here's here's the statement that I want to give you. The reason many of us have not reached the goals that we have set for ourselves already, and let me also throw this in, what will keep you from reaching your goal in 23 is because of this. We have spent all of our time and efforts in attempting to change the situation when we need to be changing ourselves. All right, let me say it this way. We spent all of our time trying to change where we're going that we forget that we are supposed to be working on ourselves. I want that to sink in. You are so focused on getting the promotion that you're trying to work that job, but you're doing nothing to get yourself ready. You got me? You're so focused on trying to reach that new relationship. You're so focused on trying to meet that man or meet that woman. You're so focused on trying to get that new job that you're so focused on trying to change that situation. But the reason you have not acquired, the reason you've not been successful in, in accomplishing these goals is not because you haven't been trying to reach something and change something, but the person that you should have been working on was you. Is that speaking to anybody? So I want you to see that. 
Because in our life, we're going to run across people. We're going to run across our own thoughts and emotions that are going to try to put a detour sign in front of where we're going. There are going to be people who are going to say, oh, you've tried losing weight before. There's no need of you trying again. Okay, this is only going to last a week. Okay. Oh, you want to diet again? Oh, which diet are you trying this time? All detours. People trying to detour you away from where you're supposed to be. Oh, you've not found a man yet? Oh, you've not found somebody that loves you yet? Detours. And if we're not careful, our own minds will do that. When we say things like, I, I'm just going to be stuck in this job forever. I'm never going to get that promotion. I'm, I'm never going to get out of this dead-end job. I'm never going to make more money. I'm never going to get debt-free. What you're doing is you're allowing your own mind and your own emotions to put detour signs in front of you. And that's simply because you're, for, you're more focused on the situation instead of being focused on yourself. You're working more to get to the situation that you're failing to realize that when you grow, it grows. Here's a little key I want you to write down. Write this down. You become more valuable by changing you. That's when you become more valuable. When you change you. You, you want your job and your boss to look at you for a promotion? Change you. Quit trying to convince them. Change you. Quit trying to weasel your way in thinking you've got to kiss butt and do all this sort of stuff. No, no. Change you. Grow you. I, I read this statement, um, and I thought it was really good, and I wanted to share it with you. Your career will only grow to the extent that you grow. Mm -hmm. You grow. All right, let's, let's change career out. Fill in the blank. Your money will only grow to the extent that you grow. Opportunities will only grow to the extent that you grow. Relationships will only grow to the extent that you grow. See, we've been sitting back going, I want this to happen, I want this to happen, I want this to happen, I want this to happen. And we sit here and we are waiting as though someone is going to deliver this to us on a silver platter. When all that time that been, we've been waiting and watching and conniving and planning and doing whatever you're doing, we would have changed the entire atmosphere of it if we'd simply been working on ourselves. Because what you have at this moment in your life, you have attracted by the person you became. What you have. What you have right now is what you've been able to attract to yourself by being the person you are right now. You want those opportunities to grow? You have to grow. So that means is, if that is true... What have you done to grow yourself? What have you done to put yourself in a position to be able to make the necessary changes? Now, I saw a lot of people commenting debt as their goal. Okay, let me ask you this question. How many of you own a book by Dave Ramsey? Just, just a simple question. How many of you have gone to the bookstore or gone to Amazon and you have bought a book by Dave Ramsey on how to get debt free. All right, so see what you've done is you're saying, I'm going to get debt free, but you've done absolutely nothing to get yourself ready or to grow yourself with the knowledge that you need to know on how you're going to accomplish that. Some of you may be looking for a relationship. You may be looking for a future husband or a future wife. I pray it's because that you're single now, but you're praying. Okay, let me ask you this question. What book have you what book have you received and you've purchased to help get yourself ready for that? Have you dealt with 
the negative emotions that you already have that you, that you get those things taken care of so you don't take your hurts from the past into a new relationship. I mean, you're going to sabotage your new relationship if you've never dealt with the pain that you got in the past. Where that last person hurt you, where that last person let you down, where that last person walked all over you, you've not dealt with any of those feelings, you've not gone to see a counselor, you've not read any books, you've not done anything to separate yourself. So right now, you're sitting here holding all that baggage, and you're saying, I want a new relationship. And you're wondering why no one is attracted to you. It's not you that's turning them off. It's your baggage that's turning them off. Because when people want to be with you, they want to be with you, not you and all your exes. That's good, somebody. So my question to you is, what have you done to get yourself ready? All right, some of you are looking for that promotion. All right, that promotion is more money, and that's all you've got on your mind. More money, more money, more money. Here's something that I have learned in working in the corporate world and working where all the places that I've worked throughout my life. This is the one thing I've learned. More money equals more stress. That's the reason they're paying you more. That's the reason a doctor that does brain surgery makes more money than the person that's flipping hamburgers at McDonald's. Because there's more pressure. There's more at stake. There's more stress. And many of you are saying, I want more money, but you're not getting yourself ready mentally and emotionally to handle the stress that's going to come with it. You're stressed out with the job level you've got now. The workload that you've got on yourself right now is about to put you under, but yet you're wanting more and you're wondering why God is not allowing that to happen. It's because he loves you. He doesn't want to see you go under. So instead of just trying to work your hands off, trying to get to that new salary, what are you doing to get yourself ready to receive the new salary? All right, so let's just say that the promotion means that you're going to have employees under you. What books are you reading right now to help you to become an effective leader? What, what are you reading right now? What podcast are you listening to? What, what, what are you putting inside of you that is getting you ready for that next level? I want to be a manager one day, okay? What are you doing to become an effective manager? Well, I can't get done all that I got to get done today, all right? Why do you not own a book or listening to a podcast about time management? You see where I'm going here? We've been so concentrated on what we are wanting that we have failed to get ourselves ready to receive that. And it's never going to be attracted to us if we are not ready. Let me make this statement, and then I'm going to start wrapping up. Is this okay? Is, is this speaking to anybody? Here's a truth that I want you to write down. Post it, note it somewhere, whatever you need to do. A person with no vision will always return to their past. A person without a vision will always return to that. You know why 2021 is just like 2020? Do you know why in 2022 it was just like 2021? It's because you had no vision. Not only did you not have a vision, but you were not working on yourself to make it further down the road. And if you're not careful, 2023 will be just like 2022. Number one, if you don't have a vision, and number two, if you're not getting yourself ready for what you want to accomplish. You are going to repeat the same steps, go through the same pain, go through the same heartache. You're going to go through every bit of that all over again if you don't change something. And guess what? You can't change your job. You can't change if the promotion's going to come. You can't change the sickness that may come your way. You can't change if someone falls in love with you or not. But here's what you can change. 
you can change you. So if I can't control any of this other stuff, there's one thing I can control, me. That's the one thing I can control. I can't control what my boss does. I can't control what my coworkers do. I can't control what my husband or wife does. I can't control, I can't control what my money does, but I can control me. So now that you have listed everything down that you want to accomplish, and I know that there's more than just what you listed, my question to you is, okay, now, what do you have in place to help you reach that goal? Or were you just sitting back going, oh, I'm just going to do this. Oh, I'm just going to do this. this. This is my goal for the year. I'm, I'm going to get debt free, okay? What plan are you going to use? Have you studied up on why you got the weight in the first place? Have you gone to the doctor to find out what it is that's actually causing you to retain weight? Okay, do you have a plan? Not just a diet, but do you have a plan? Okay, do you have some accountability in your life to help you stick to that plan? What are you doing? Because if you don't have a plan, you're going to repeat everything you did in 2022, and you're going to get at the end of 2023 and go, I didn't make any progress whatsoever. It's because you're simply waiting on everything to come to you, and you're not doing anything to get yourself in. I'm going to show you something. I, I can't believe I'm showing you this. Can't believe I'm showing you this. But I'm going to show you. So, <clears throat> my business is comedy. My business is comedy. And so there are a lot of goals that I have for myself. It's, it's brand new for me. I've only been doing this for about three years, so it's still brand new to me. But I'm going to tell you what I've done, and I'm going to be very honest with you. So I went and bought a book. This was one of the most recommended books for people to learn how to write comedy. Okay? Um, Comedy is very difficult to write, especially if you want to be clean, and especially if you're going to do it in the church, you have to take it one step further in making sure you don't do offensive stuff. And I know I push the envelope, but sometimes I do that on purpose. But I knew that getting in front of people is no problem for me. That, that's not a problem for me. Talking to people on stage, no problem. Delivering, communicating, no problem. You know where my issue is? In the writing sitting down and actually writing, thinking through, and making it the best it can be. So I went and bought a book. Not only did I buy a book, but I'm going to tell you another thing I did. I have hired a mentor. A comedian out of L.A. is going to meet with me by Zoom every Tuesday. Right now it's set up for the next four to six weeks. We're going to see how it goes. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Because I have goals that I want to reach. And to reach those goals, I've got to become better at my craft. So I'm putting things in place for me to become better. Yeah, I want to be better. That's the area that I need to become better to accomplish the goals that I have in my life. So for that to happen, I can't just sit back and go, man, I sure do hope the Grand Ole Opry calls. Man, I sure do hope I get on this tour. Man, I sure do hope I get to perform here or get to go there. When I become better at what I do, that's when the invitations will come. So I'm working through a book right now. I've got a mentor that is actually going to be reaching out to me and working with me for an hour every Tuesday because I'm not going to sit around and just hope that I accidentally fall into an invitation. I want to become so good at what I do that they ring my phone off the hook. So that's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you not only to have your goals, I want to encourage you not only to keep your mindset on that, but I want you to go that one step further. And I want you to stop focusing on where you're headed and start focusing in this new year. Ugh. Start focusing on this new year to get yourself ready for where you're headed.
there are several people that I have been reading after when it comes to leadership and things. And one of the common threads that I have seen is that successful people read. Successful people read. <clears throat> they read a lot. In fact, uh, I think it was Warren Buffett that quoted, he said, I could walk into your house and I could look at your library and tell whether or not you're going to make it or not. Library, the books you own. Yep. You've got books. Um, you've got audio books that you could listen to. You've got podcasts that are very popular. You could sign up for a podcast. You could listen to that as you're driving to work. You could listen to it on your lunch hour. You could listen to it before you go to bed. Why hasn't it happened yet? Because you're so focused on where you're headed and what you want to accomplish that you have missed the secret ingredient. And that secret ingredient, somebody type this out on the comments when I say it. The secret ingredient is focusing on you. That's the secret ingredient. Focusing on you. I've got goals. But to get to those goals, I'm not going to figure out how do I reach them or manipulate them or try to convince them that they need me. What I'm in turn going to do is I'm going to focus on me. How do I get myself ready? How do I make myself better? How do I get myself in a place to where I am ready for that stage? I'm ready for that opportunity. I'm ready to accomplish that goal. So now get after it. Every person listening to me right now, when we get off of this Facebook Live, every person either should be trying to find a book or trying to find a podcast that focuses on you getting to the goal you want to see. We make plans, we write our vision, we develop vision boards but we're trying so hard to change our situation that we forget that we're the ones that have to change. And so I want to encourage you for 2023. I want to encourage you. And for those of you that are in my fan club, um, I'm going to be um, challenging you a lot more. Uh, we'll probably have a, a few more talks like this. I hope focus on you. You want to get debt free? You need to own a book about how to get debt free. You want a new relationship in your life? You should be reading or listening to something that helps you deal with yourself and your past to get yourself ready. Have you got sickness in your life? Well, maybe you need to be reading a book on holistic healing. Yeah. There's all kind of stuff out there. I want you to be a better you. And I want you to get everything that you have listed that you want to see in 23. But it's only going to happen when you focus on you. Now, get off this live and go focus on you. 2023 is going to be a great year.